If you find colour matching to an on-screen reference tricky, then keep watching because this is the perfect video for you. So first of all, move your reference to an area of the image that's kind of mid-tones. And by that, I mean in this image here with these headphones, which is available in the description for download, of course. In the top right, you can see it's brighter green, where the light source was in the original shot. And then in the opposite corner down here, it's more of a darker, you know, more in the shadows. We want to avoid either of those kind of extremes for the area we're going to use as a reference. So put it somewhere that's kind of middle tones, which down here appears to be kind of somewhere in between the two. So now we've got our reference here. The first thing I need to do on this shot quickly is isolate the product from the background. Make a duplicate of our background layer here by pressing Command or Control J, depending if you're a PC or a Mac user. And we will press W, it's a shortcut for our Magic Wand tool. And then you'll see a Select Subject button at the top. Click that, and it does normally a pretty good job on sort of hard edge objects of doing a quick and quite accurate selection. So once we've done that, we can just go down and press the Layer Mask button to convert that into a layer mask. So if I turn the background layer off, you can see it's done a pretty good job of the cutout. It's quite soft edges, which is a little bit of a problem sometimes with this tool, and I've seen other people comment on it. But if you get these soft edges, not a problem. Just make sure you've got the layer mask highlighted and just go filter, sharpen, and then go to unsharp mask. And just as you can sharpen pixels on the image, if you run this on the layer mask itself and not on the pixel layer you can use it to sharpen the mask so just tweak the radius normally somewhere between one and five or six normally works on the average image and then just crank up the amount you don't want it to go too far but just to take away from those soft edges a bit okay that's looking better so now we've got our headphones on a separate layer that's going to allow us to deal with the background and the headphones independently. So between the background layer and our headphones, I'm gonna create a new folder um, and I'm just gonna call this color change just to keep things neat. So what I like to do is a little three-step method. The first is we create a color fill layer in the adjustment layer section and I'll click on the square, I like swatch square to match that color exactly. Click okay and I'm gonna change the blending mode to hue, not color hue. Now, while I'm just, I'm just gonna change the um, name here just to keep tidy. And the reason I'm not using color blend mode to start with is it has a tendency to make things look a bit cartoonish and just puts too much uniform saturation everywhere because the color blending mode is actually a mixture of hue and saturation combined together and we want to have control of those two separately for a slightly more realistic result. So I'm going to change that back to hue. So we just talked about we need hue saturation and the third component in matching any color is the luminance or the brightness. So hue saturation brightness. So we can now go to hue saturation and we're just going to use this for saturation. So I'll just put sat and we're going to create a curves adjustment layer where there we go where i'll just drag that down to the bottom so the hue's now correct fixed because remember we sampled that from the main swatch the main little image here so we've taken care of that we don't need to worry about that so now we just need to match the saturation and the curves and being the lightness now the easiest way to do this is to temporarily eliminate one so turn the saturation layer off because we don't need that in the moment and right at the top here make a temporary hue and saturation layer and desaturate it, take it to zero, like minus 100, sorry, but you know, take the saturation all the way down. So now we've got a situation where we've taken saturation completely out of the equation for a minute to let us focus on our brightness levels. So if I grab this curve, I'm just gonna drag a middle point of this one and just move it around until the square starts to disappear. It won't completely disappear in this image because the background's a gradient, so it's not a completely flat tone. But you can use your eyes and just see which direction it's going in. So there, it's just a little bit, tweak it down the curve a little bit, something like that, just a small change on that one. And then we can turn off that temporary layer at the top and get rid of it if we want. So now we know the hue's correct, the brightness is correct, and so that only leaves the saturation. And because that just leaves the saturation, there's no guessing, you just drag it up or down, depending on how far it needs to go and when it matches close enough to your liking, you stop. 
now we've dragged that to match like bear in mind again like i just said it won't be a hundred percent match it won't disappear because it's got a gradient to the background but if this was a solid solid color background you could make it match so well that, that square disappears and now what it's left us with is a nicely matched background but because the saturation is now pushing a little bit too much in the areas down here it's just looking a little bit strange down here nowhere near as bad as if we'd use the color blending mode but we can tone that back a little bit by going on the layer mask for the saturation layer and either with a brush set to black what we can do is maybe put the opacity down to something like 20 percent make sure the brush is quite soft we can just manually sweep this across any big areas that we think of a little bit look a little bit oversaturated to kind of desaturate those areas or we can choose to just drop the saturation down a little bit overall which is what i like to do so we've matched it perfectly but now it's still a tonal match for our reference but it just looks a little bit more natural so bear that in mind if you've got an overall image that's looking a bit too cartoonish and a bit too saturated feel free to drop it down slightly same as the curves if you need to just that tweak it slightly okay so i think that's looking pretty good but one thing that's catching my eye right away and this is what a lot of people miss when they do things like this is the original image reflected color from the environment into the product so we can see the headphones are supposed to be black but they've still got this green tint on from the original background can you see which was making it look natural now that looks strange because it's still got the original green tint we can easily take care of this because we isolated the layer earlier we'll go up to the headphone layer here create a new adjustment layer and there's loads of ways to do this but i'll do hue saturation hold alt and click on the hue saturation icon and it will clip it to that headphone layer so that is only going to affect the pixels of the headphones and not the background and this little icon here next to the word range it's like a double-ended arrow that's a targeted selection tool you can click on that and then click the area of color you want to target and in this case it's that and it'll go it'll just go to the range because sometimes if it's green it'll go to yellow it might go to cyan so if you do that and click it'll work it out for you and then I'm just going to drag the huge slider. You don't have to be as accurate with this because it's just a it's just a subtle reflection on the product. I'm just going to take it somewhere close to the color of the new background. Maybe just drop the saturation down a bit so it's not as strong. But there we go. We've now matched the previous kind of color contamination to our new background color as well. And that is it.